everyone, I'm Sandy Lene. Welcome to Psychic Creations History Series. You are about to embark on a blast to the past. We have a very interesting program for you today. On our last program, we featured a Pinkerton detective from an agency established in the United States by Scotsman Alan Pinkerton in the 1850s. On the program, on this program, I should say, we have another very interesting Pinkerton detective by the name of Kate Warren, who was quite brave in her choice of careers for that time. Yes, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank today. you for having me. This Appreciate is it. fun. This is fun. Well, Miss, and this is Sandy Jalot. I'm sorry, I forgot to, to say her name. <laughs> Sandy Jalot, I like your name. Awesome. Well, now, if you would, Miss Kate, could you please tell our viewers about yourself and your place in history? Well, I portray Kate Warren, and she is, in, well, let's start at the beginning. Okay. I was born in 1823. Okay. At the age of 18, I was married. At 19, I was a childless widow and moved back home because that was the proper thing to do. Well, at 23, after living with my parents for so long, I decided it was time for me to be an independent woman. So I packed my bags, and I left New York and went to Chicago. In Chicago, I, of course, had to find a job, and by this time, the Civil War had started. Well, in the local newspaper there in Chicago, I found an ad placed by Mr. Alan Pinkerton. And in it, he was advertising for two positions, one for a secretary in the office there where he worked. The other one was for a detective. So I went in and I applied. Well, Mr. Pinkerton at the time really thought I was there for the secretarial position. Well, I have to tell you, we took a couple days of really firm discussion on my part with Mr. Pinkerton telling him that I did not want to be a secretary. I wanted to be a detective. Well, he finally capitulated because I told him that I could go where the men could not go. I could dress the part. I could act the part and get in with all these lady, society ladies and all those society ladies are married to lieutenants and generals, etc., and find out all sorts of information, which I did. So, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. But anyhow, so he decided after a couple months that I was right and started to trust me. So he sent me to Baltimore to a fancy hotel there in Baltimore, and I portrayed a southern lady, and that lady got in with several generals' wives and their daughters. Of course, you know how women are. They all talk. I don't know why people think that, but we do anyhow. So anyway, we talked, and I found out that through pillow talk with their husbands, etc., that there was going to be an attempt on Mr. Lincoln's life. Now, now Mr. Lincoln was not yet president, but he was going to be going to Washington to be inaugurated. So, and he was going to get that train there in Baltimore. So, anyhow, I went back and I told Mr. Pinkerton, who told Mr. McGowan, uh, General McGowan, Am I saying that right anyway? So anyhow, he, they all got together and the Pinkertons came in undercover, including myself, and they were arrested and, were, and protected Mr. Lincoln. And uh, before he was assassinated, now this is the first assassination attempt. So when Mr. Lincoln finally did get on the train after it was considered safe, I went along with Mr. Lincoln and I stood in front of that car door that he was in, the car, train car he was in, and I stood there for two days, and I did not sleep, and I protected that car. Now, this, now the story is 
and Mr. Um, Pinkerton always credited me with that. The saying that the Pinkertons have is that we never sleep, and I am personally credited with that because I did not sleep while we were on that train. So. I've got chills. <laughs> that is so interesting. Yes. Yes, I always thought it was, you know, because women in that day, we just didn't get much credit for anything, you know. Sure, sure. So anyway, yes. So we got there and we got to Washington. Well, on, when Mr. Later in the time, time frame there, when Mr. Lincoln was now President Lincoln, he went to, the, uh, you all know, Ford Theater with his beloved wife. Well... As it was, because our agency had gotten so large and the government people were not crazy about us, they decided they wanted their own agency to, to protect Mr. Lincoln at the Ford Theater. So we were excused. Well, one of those men, they left the chamber that Mr. and Mrs. Lincoln were sitting in to watch the performance. And he went downstairs to the bar and got drunk. And that is a fact. Isn't that terrible? Now, Alan and myself have always said that if the Pinkertons had been there, the incident at Fort Theater would have never happened. Because obviously we didn't drink on the job. And especially a lady at the time period, that kind of nonsense just wouldn't have been happening. So anyway. Oh, 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 wow, okay. So anyway, Mr. Allen, who was a feisty Scotchman, he um, was so impressed with my job performance that he actually started a section of the Pinkertons for just women detectives and made me head of that department. Oh. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Oh, I like that. I like that. Yes, yes. I always thought it was very generous of him. Mm -hmm. Of course, there were a lot of rumors in the day about his relationship and I, mine, but none of it was ever proven and definitely not true. I can tell you that right now. He was a married man. Okay. I would never have that done. I never. I was a single woman all of my life after that one year of marriage. But that was enough. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> I do know what you know. That is, that's, okay, that's awesome. I'm, <laughs> I didn't mean to get you off course. That is, uh, okay, and? <laughs> all right. That was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yes, so, where was I? Anyway, I didn't live a very long life. I was fairly young when I passed. Mm -hmm. I was only 38 years old. So, we, and I died of pneumonia in that time period. That was fairly common. But Mr. Pinkerton was so heartbroken when I passed that even though his wife objected to it, he buried me in the family plot. Aww. So when Mr. Pinkerton died, he was buried right next to me. And on the other side was his wife. <laughs> he was such a devil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, a, oh, yeah, oh. <laughs> that's fun. That's His fun. history can be a lot of fun sometimes. You just have to look for it. That's right. Oh my gosh, I got tears in my eyes. I'm laughing so hard. That is fun. That's fun. And you were 38 years old. I was. Mm -hmm. And you were a detective all the way up to your death date? I was. Mm -hmm. I was. I ran the female section of mm -hmm. that of the organization. Mm -hmm. Did you, when you were head of the organization there, did you still go out and... Oh, be, absolutely. Okay. I loved it. Yes, okay. I did. I did. It was just so interesting. Mm. How many women applied? There were a total of 51 women when I passed. Well, I'll be darned. So it was a good-sized female organization. Mm -hmm. There are jobs that women would have never had in that time period if sure. it hadn't been for Mr. Allen hiring me. Mm -hmm. 
That's that's a good point. That's a very good point. Yes, because mm -hmm. women didn't work in that time period. Mm -hmm. You were considered, you married, you had children, you stayed home. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, so, and I mean, if you were a wife in good standing, you might get the key to the front door to your house. That's but a good point. Yeah. I, yes, so it was very restricted for women mm -hmm. in that time period. Sure, sure. Yes. And it sounds like you had a lot of wonderful adventures. Oh, I did. I did. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun, wasn't it? Yes, it was. <laughs> Especially when you can infiltrate where the men go. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's just amazing what kind of pillow talk goes on with women and their partners. I just don't know what to tell you. I don't think it's appropriate on this program, however. Oh. <laughs> Well, that's all right. Oh goodness, this is this. <laughs> well, it, it, sorry, viewers. This is wonderful. This is It'll wonderful. It'll be fine, dear. It'll I know. <laughs> I don't think I've had this much fun in a long time on my shows. Oh gosh, this is awesome. Well, well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, Sandy. <laughs> yes. Yes, Sandy. <laughs> Could you tell our viewers how you got interested in history and then especially to portray Kate Ward as a pink well, detective? Okay. Um, I saw Bob's picture where I worked at the time and I thought he was the cutest thing since buttered biscuits. So what I did is I joined just to meet him because I <laughs> knew I was going to marry the man. And I did. And you did. <laughs> and so, since then, um, and then we then we started doing things, or he did, mm -hmm. and um, doing things with uh, NCWV, Nevada Civil War Volunteers. Mm -hmm. And I and I joined also, and I needed a woman to portray a part or a name that had some sort of meaning. Mm -hmm. So I started reading up, and I found Kate. And the minute I found Kate, I knew that she was it. I knew it. Mm -hmm. And I've been her ever since. Really? For, let me see, Bob's been 26 years as a Pinkerton detective. Have you been there 26 oh, years? Oh, no, no. Um, Bob and I have only been together for 11 years, I believe. Oh, nice. Yeah. Very, very nice. And in the group, about 12. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Nice. I, I had to like let him court me for a while. Well, of course. Sure you did. <laughs> that is fun. That is fun. And um, so finding out about a Kate Warren just really inspired yes. you to become a, a Pinkerton detective. It did. It mm -hmm. did. It just was fun. She mm -hmm. was just so interesting. And she was a real groundbreaker. Oh, and. Oh. and mm -hmm. And I think, and I'm really grateful that you did invite me, simply because is this is March, and so it's National History Month for women. Well, it is. Mm -hmm. And what a good time to talk about a woman who broke ground, really, for a great many women that mm -hmm. followed her. That's very true. That's very true. Mm -hmm. You were a pioneer and a forerunner. <laughs> I was. Mm -hmm. I was. That is wonderful. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. I can understand why you would want to portray her. Yes. How interesting. Did it take a lot? Uh, did you find a lot of information um, for researching her? Is there a lot out there? There is not a whole lot. There's actually only one uh, painting of her oh. done in 1866, and it's the only confirmed portrait of her. Okay. There are no other photographs or paintings of her. Oh, is that right? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay. They yeah. have, well, they have one picture they think is her, but it's never been confirmed. Oh, okay. So. Do you have that portrait or a picture? I have it at home. Mm -hmm. I do. Oh, yes. nice. Very, very nice. Well, if you don't mind answering this question. Certainly. Being my show has got the context of psychic creations, okay, the psychic part. Uh -huh. When you were doing your research about Kate, did you maybe feel her there with you? I not so much felt her as I felt the connection to her oh, reading mm -hmm. it. 
If that you're maybe mm -hmm. that's the same question. Okay, sure. But absolutely, yeah. And I knew I could do her. I knew oh. that she wanted she, her history sure. needed to be said, mm -hmm. right. you know, and be told. Well, she probably grabbed onto you and said, "Hey, Sandy, <laughs> over here, honey." <laughs> that's right. Very nice. <laughs> yes. Very, very nice. Oh, I like that. And you've enjoyed uh, portraying her all these years. Oh, I have. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. She's a lot of fun to do. Well, she sounds like an awesome lady. Yeah, I think she was probably a very strong woman. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think um, if she had not been, she would not have been able to do what she did. Mm -hmm. you know, and that may be why she never remarried also. Oh, that's a good point. That's yeah, a good she point. was probably mm -hmm. very forceful and learned to be very forceful in a man's world. Mm -hmm. Well, she would have to be at that, that time frame, that yes. time period. Yes, sure, absolutely. sure. And did she live in Chicago all of her life? She did. Mm -hmm. She did. She lived in Chicago. Uh, she originally was from New York, mm -hmm. and a very nice family in New York, which is why she was able to um, get in with the Southern ladies because she had the right manners and the right look mm -hmm. and the right speech to do that. That's a very interesting point. Back then, there was, well, the realms that you had to there be There was a divide, mm -hmm. absolutely. Divide. Mm -hmm. Yes. I like that. Yeah. And uh, Kate had it all. She did. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like she had it all. That's awesome. That is it's awesome. a great woman. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, as a woman, okay, mm -hmm. who entered into the men's field, more or less, okay, yes. at that time frame, what would uh, what advice would you give to the listeners for a woman that wanted to be a Chautauquan performer at that same time, uh, it, 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 it same time period? Start looking for a woman that um, you don't read about, you don't hear about. I've had you know like Kate, people have never heard of her, and I've had people in Civil War argue with me that there were no women. Uh, in that that uh -huh. time, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, if women were not allowed by law in many states uh, to be um, a police officer until 1900, it was 1903. Oh, it was against the law for a woman to be a police officer. Really? Yes. Well, then Kate wasn't a groundbreaker then. Oh, absolutely, mm -hmm. she was. Yes. Yes. That is so interesting. Wow, that's. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to say. I just, I gotta, I, I'm, I'll edit this out. I just gotta let that process. I am just, wow. Yeah. How Women have really, and she is probably, she's in the lead of allowing, giving women the right now to, we vote now and we have jobs now and we can drive and mm -hmm. we even have the key to our own house. There you go. There you go. That is so interesting. I never knew anything about Pinkerton agencies, and I have just learned so much from yes. you. That's interesting. You. I was wondering if Kate ever uh, impersonated a man in... Not that I'm aware of. It's never. I've never found anything <coughs> in what I've read about her. She always uh, portrayed um, a woman where she could get in with society ladies because the society ladies were usually married to generals and corporal, you know, up the line, whatever the military ranking is. Mm -hmm. Did you ever carry a gun? She carried a Derringer, uh, which was the four ladies in that time mm -hmm. period because she was still under a great deal of restrictions about what she could do in polite society. So going to a party or a tea, she would carry her weapon, but it was well concealed. Now, our, our cameraman just asked you a very important question. Did you ever have to use your Derringer to bring in a bad guy? <laughs> well, <laughs> in Baltimore, when the gentlemen that were there, I wouldn't call them gentlemen, but they were there, trying to do their thing against Mr. Lincoln, um, those gentlemen, my gentlemen, did have weapons. But there is no um, writings about what Miss um, 
Warren did, other than and I, uh, other than escort him onto the train and guard the front door. Mm -hmm. So my assumption is, and we all know what that means, um, that she did have a weapon in guard since she was guarding Mr. Lincoln sure. in the train. Mm -hmm. So, how many bad guys did you? Bring on home. <laughs> <laughs> there is no record of that one, honey. Oh, there is. Oh, well, let's just say. Cool. But there what is more than one way to bring bad guy home. Well, that's very, very true. Very, very true. In right. your, in your opinion, yes, uh, sir. Do you think that uh, she would have used her weapon? Absolutely. If okay. Yes. Absolutely. Right. Yes. Well, sure. Yeah, because she was put in some positions yeah. that required mm -hmm. that she protect herself or another agent that may have been with her. Right. Very true. Was there ever a time where there was a group of you women, you know, uh, two, three, you had an accompanist or, or uh, you worked with another agent, uh, I mean, very closely? The only other agent that I worked with closely was Mr. Uh, Pinkerton himself. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And he and I would travel different parts of the country on train um, to get to where we needed to be if there was a situation that needed to be looked at closer. So the Pinkerton Agency, you were hired all over the United States? You went everywhere? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I did. that's interesting. I did. Yes, okay. I traveled. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, then you did have a lot of wonderful adventures. I there. did. I you know, certainly did. Lots of territory. <laughs> and Oh, my gosh. That's awesome. That's lots awesome. of interesting characters mm -hmm. out there. I, I can imagine <laughs> that there were at that time. I do. I do. So did you arrest the bad guy? Did you hand? I was part of the team that arrested the gentleman that tried to assassinate Mr. Lincoln. Well, I meant others. Um, I don't know. They, the stories about her um, are few and far between, mm -hmm. and it's hard to find any really good information. I mean, if you think about history and women's history, um, history in general is always written by the winner. And so mm -hmm. that a, and history is written predominantly by men at the time, and so a lot of history about the women was left out. I get it. I get it. I was just wondering if she yeah. was that tough that she. By her in. portrait uh, that was done in 1866, she looks tough. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Very, very nice. Very nice. Very severe. Mm -hmm. Oh, is that right? Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, gonna have to be. Yes, yeah, she did. Mm -hmm. She did. Interesting. Is there something uh, really cool that you want to put out there? I think that in today's society, um, girls and women are much freer to do things that they wish to do. And I think that no woman or girl, no matter how old or young you are, should um, have doubts in herself if she wants to do something and to just go out and do it. Very, very good advice. Very yeah, good just advice. Just do it. Just do it. Yeah. Because Kate Warren did. She did, mm -hmm. uh, under a whole lot worse circumstances that's than right. we have today. That's right, that's right. <laughs> uh, what is your contact information you could tell our listeners? Well, mine is the same as Bob's, the other interview that you had mm -hmm. done earlier time frame. Uh, so um, I belong to Nevada Gunfighters Theatrical Troop. You can get a hold of me at 775-835-8466. And I can hook you up with our group president, mm -hmm. John Moore, and we would love to have you. Awesome. Oh, uh, this would be fun. You could be a saloon girl and shoot your husband, too. <gasps> I like that idea. <laughs> you need to cut that part out. No, yeah, I like that idea, too. I like too. that. <laughs> That was Cheers. fun. <laughs> that was fun. Nobody's yeah. ever accused me of being shy. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Sandy. Oh, you're welcome. welcome. And Kate Warren for being on Psychic Creations History Series. What an honor this has been. And fun. This has been so much fun. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. It's been a great, great interview. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Well, if you would like to be a guest on Psychic Creations History Series, you can contact me at my website, which is www.sandysychicstones.com. 
Thank you so much. You're for welcome. This was thank fun. You. This was fun. And thank you, viewers, for watching Sandy's Psychic, whatever my show is, a Psychic <laughs> Creations <laughs> History Series. I'm never going to get that right. And remember, history created who we are today. <laughs>